Hi, this is your Sapin Bhartiya and today we have with us once again Robin Bandergin, Executive Director of OpenJS Foundation. Robin, it's great to have you on the show again. Thanks for having me, Swap. And today we are going to talk about something really exciting, which is uh, the largest one-time investment to the OpenJS Foundation through Sovereign Tech Fund, which is, you know, a million dollars. Before we go a deep bit deeper into into this discussion, uh, just for our viewers, tell us what is OpenJS Foundation all about? Uh, the OpenJS Foundation is basically the home for JavaScript and the web. Uh, it's uh, hosted at the Linux Foundation, but we are an independent organization created by the mergers of the Node.js Foundation and the JavaScript Foundation. So we are the neutral home to grow the web ecosystem. Talk a bit about Sovereign Tech Fund. The Sovereign Tech Fund um, is somewhat new uh, and created by some really great uh, individuals in Germany. It is a uh, government program through uh, Germany, um, and they are, are committed really to uh, funding um, and supporting the digital infrastructure of global economies. Um, and considering that JavaScript is in 98% of the world's websites, uh, we uh, submitted an application for support for an investment from the grant. They just uh, spun up a program last last November. It was a little bit of an experiment and the government renewed them for two years. So pretty exciting. If you look at open source, uh, the adoption of open source is quite different in Europe than it is in the US. A lot of uh, grassroots label you know, work is going on there. Linux kernel, it comes from Europe. A lot of other projects, they come from Europe. But we have not seen the participation of big players in in, in that way. That's where uh, a lot of things are changing. LF Europe is now there. But governments are investing a lot of resources in open source. They have a lot of dedicated you know, join up is there a lot of uh, other things today. If I ask you, not exactly contrast, but how do you see the European open source movement versus North American uh, open source movement? Do you see any different, or it's like nope, it's, uh, it's same, it's just different regions? Yeah, well, if you look at Europe and Germany in particular, they were really the leaders in enacting technology policy. I think in 1970. Uh, one of their states was the first uh, government to pass the Data Protection Act. So if you follow sort of privacy and security uh, globally, you shouldn't be surprised that Germany is, you know, one of the first to make uh, big investments um, in technology, particularly open source. Talk a bit about, as you uh, mentioned, you know, JavaScript, that is one of the most widely used, you know, technologies out there. But Talk a bit about were there any specific concerns either from European partners, Germany, that they were like, hey, this is something that needed, needs uh, much more, you know, funding because a lot of things rely on them. Yeah. So as I mentioned, 98% of the world's websites rely on JavaScript. It's really everywhere. Um, we like to say, I know in the U.S. that Node.js, for example, one of our projects that funds every, it runs everything from Netflix to NASA. Um, and so it is critically important to many organizations. Um, and so if you look at why they uh, invested in JavaScript, um, if you care about supply chain uh, security, um, JavaScript is really you know, a core uh, dependency in almost everybody's uh, technology solution. They were looking at uh, criticality scores, uh, broad adoption, and of course we have that um, Node.js is downloaded about 2 billion times a year. jQuery, which is one of our projects, is in 77% of the world's websites. Um, and so by investing in the OpenJS Foundation, they're really able to reach great scale across JavaScript. Um, and also we are taking some of those best practices from other security experts and scaling those through the entire JavaScript ecosystem, not just um, our hosted projects. So if they, you know, really want to make a difference um, and be sort of a leader in that space, uh, they came to us or we came to them and we came together to develop the proposal, actually, uh, to think about how we could best scale uh, that investment. When we look at open source or technology in general, of course, the whole world runs on software and most of the software that we are consuming or using today is open source. Uh, do you think that we need more 
engagement collaboration between public sector and private sector the public sector should i mean a few years ago by the nation they came up with that security order and it was more some requirement with open source as bombs fear not only just the policies and investment they should go into this kind of open source project which are like you know as jim jones says uh, you know positive some win win game uh, versus investing in uh, proprietary technologies what do you, what are your thoughts about that there's often like a pivotal moment when a when an issue you know rises to the level of nation's capitals uh we saw that with privacy and of course now we're seeing this with open source um and so you know as a result governments are creating new uh policies and mandates around open source technologies um the interesting thing about um a lot of javascript technologies is that it is it is community led there it's not a, there's not a lot of projects outside of perhaps react and next who are really funded by companies so you know so one thing that the sovereign tech fund is really invested in is supporting sort of the people behind the code um and sort of that public it's almost like a you know a public sector you know for the greater good um and how they're supporting that can you talk about what are the areas where this investment will be used can you give us more details yeah um it'll be used kind of broadly in a few ways the first is really um really modernizing the infrastructure a lot of our technologies are 15 years or more older so there's a lot of technical debt a lot of patchwork quilts of legacy uh software so we're hoping to create a single scalable build test and release infrastructure uh working with the Linux Foundation IT department so we're uh, we've been briefing all of the projects and working on helping them modernize uh their technologies and but that will do also is really remove a lot of the friction and burden on maintainers on the infrastructure so they can just continue to work on the code that powers new features we're also uh working with some of the projects um on audits and we're not just talking code audits let's talk about um what are some maybe root causes after we do a security audit what are some best practices to make you know to really sort of strengthen the project overall so we're working with the open source technology improvement fund to facilitate that so that's um exciting work um we're also working on sort of what just sort of the security and maintenance work stream where if you're familiar with some of the open source uh open source security foundation at the LF um there's a lot of best practices coming out of that um industry effort so we're going to take a lot of what the open ssf is doing and customize that through and for javascript um and part of doing that will also be creating a free javascript security training for uh for the communities and for end users there was also a kind of mention of you know uh, sunsetting a project because you know projects of they do reach end of life sometimes you just throw them on attic but uh, a lot of folks they depend and rely on project and we all know that uh, asking everybody to migrate to the latest version is is a big challenge so talk about uh, this 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 uh, sunsetting a project in a responsible manner yeah this was an issue that we developed with the sovereign tech fund it's you know all a lot of open source projects obviously have a life cycle about them we have 41 projects some of them have moved into emeritus status but some haven't so um we're doing an inventory and analysis of all of our projects with the maintainers uh we're looking for those who um those projects that have perhaps run out of steam they may be abandoned they may have reached their their just use use case life cycle um or maintainers may have just run out of time and interest um and so to do this you know to do a sunset program responsibly um involves a lot of communication uh with the maintainers um and the end users so we we'll, one we want to celebrate the project and the folks who really helped build those projects uh, but we will communicate uh broadly through our communications channels that these projects will be sunsetting we'll update the readmes we will um archive the projects uh kind of lock the issues um and make sure they're all set appropriately for any security updates long term so that's what we mean by sort of a responsible sunset program what's really interesting about um the security work we're doing at openjs is this uh proposal and plan with the sovereign tech fund was really developed 
uh, with our security uh, collab space. We call our working groups or SIGs, essentially we call them collaboration spaces. Um, and so it really was a team effort on this uh, big application to the German government. They're going to be uh, taking the lead on execution with our staff team support. Um, and really the folks who are uh, working in our cloud space, they are JavaScript experts. We have some security experts, but really if you're interested in this type of work, um, invitations open for you to participate. We have all of our meetings are published um, on our calendar at calendar.openjsf.org. Uh, you're welcome to attend. Uh, we'd love your help. Robin, thank you so much for taking time out today and of course talk about the foundation, this fund, and also some, some of the topics as well. Thanks for those insights. And as usual, I would love to chat with you again. Thank you. Sounds great. Thanks again for having me.